So we are adding more to our trigonometry foundation. I want to encourage you to please study the following topics because these are the foundation and we need to know these. So please review triples. You need to know five or six of those. We should know by now how to look at an angle if it's in degrees and know it's radian equivalent and vice versa. Make sure you understand about sine and cosecant being reciprocals, cosine and secant being reciprocals, and tangent and cotangent, and knowing how to set those up. Okay, um, make sure that you know the basic trig ratios of a 30, 60, 90, a 45, 45, 90, and a 30, 60, 90. Make sure you know how to set up the, tr the six trig ratios which each, with each of those. All right, so, now what we're going to do is we're going to expand on how are we um, going to find, for example, the sine of 5 pi over 4. How are we going to find the trig ratio of angles that aren't in quadrant 1? So before we can do that, we also have to uh, understand what's going on with the unit circle and the meaning of cosine and sine. So hopefully at this point you've already made the connection that we associate cosine with our x coordinate or our x distance or our horizontal distance. We associate the value for sine with y, um, our y side of the triangle, our y distance, our vertical distance. Okay, so we keep using this word unit circle. The word unit literally means one, whatever unit it is, one inch, one centimeter, one foot. All right, so if that is the case, then when we have the unit circle in the coordinate system, we know this point right here would be one zero, and we know this point would be zero one, negative one zero, and zero negative one. All right, so let's try to understand then, what does it mean when I give an answer of sine of 30 degrees? Okay, so this is an example that I'm just adding to the notes. So for you to understand, this is great that you could give, us, give me these values, but do you understand the meaning? So I drew in a 30, 30, 60, 90, 30 triangle, and I tried to make this so that this actually looked like it was about an inch long. So when I give the answer that the sine of 30 degrees is one half, what does that mean? Well, that literally means that the side of the triangle, the vertical side of the triangle should be about a half an inch long. When I give the answer that cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2, which is what we should give, but I work that out, and that is about 0 0.8660, what that means is that the length of the horizontal side in the triangle should be about 0.866 um, of an inch. Okay, so we have to associate cosine with x, the horizontal length in the triangle, or horizontal length, and sine with y, the vertical length. Okay, so again, just adding more to our connection of trig functions with the unit circle. So theta, and of course we're talking about our angle, is defined as the intersection point of its terminal side with the circle. All right, so the first example asked us to set up the six trig ratios. Um, given that the point intersects the unit circle at 3, negative 5. I did not draw my unit circle, but I 3, negative 5 would be right 3, down 5. And then this would be my triangle, and it would be in quadrant 4 in our unit circle. So, of course, we need to find our hypotenuse. And our hypotenuse, this is not a 3, 4, 5, because 5 would have to be the radius. And our hypotenuse, we do Pythagorean theorem, square root of 24, which is 2 square root of 6. Okay, so let's set up our trig ratio. Sine is opposite over adjacent, so it should be negative 5 over 2 square root of 6. And we've already discussed that in trig, we don't rationalize, which seems to contradict everything we talked about with rationalizing. But one of the main reasons is because we take reciprocals often, and this way um, we have a radical in the numerator. Secondly, the other reason we don't rationalize is we can then see what is literally our opposite side and our hypotenuse. Okay, so then cosecant would be the reciprocal, so negative 2 square root of 6 over 5. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it would be 3 over 2 square root of 6. The reciprocal would be secant, which would be 2 square root of 6 over 3. 
Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so it would be negative 5 thirds, and cotangent is negative 3 fifths. So I want you to notice that our angle was in quadrant 4, and the only values that were positive were cosine and its partner secant. So now what I would like you to do is I would like you to stop the video and I would like you to do part B, set up all six trig ratios. Okay, now let's take a look at C and I also want you to take out your calculator. All right, now um, we could always change, well, I wanna go back, I'm gonna talk about before C, I'm gonna go back up to theta here. So remember, I could put my calculator in degrees or radians, let's just put it in radians, and remember I could sign inverse this to get the actual angle. I could use any of these and they would give me the angle. Okay, so now let's take a look at C. All right, I want you to set up all six trig ratios where the circle, the point intersects the circle at negative four, zero. All right, well, here's our situation. We don't have a triangle, do we? Okay, technically this point, this angle would be a quadrantal angle because it is on one of the axes. All right, so this is why we, where we have to know that cosine is our X, sine is our y, and we have to know that tangent is sine over cosine or y over x. Um, okay, so sine of theta. So if I'm over here, sine is my y-coordinate, so sine is zero. Okay, so now let's take its reciprocal. Reciprocal would be one over zero, so cosecant is undefined. All right, cosecant actually rep represents another length um, without going into too many details, but at this point, which is actually 180 degrees, it is undefined. That segment actually doesn't exist there. All right, now, cosine of theta, my guess is that most of you are going to want to say negative four, but this is a unit circle. A unit circle always has a radius of one, so I don't care if this said negative four, zero, negative a million, zero. The cosine of theta is negative one. Now, this is why I had you take out your calculator, all right? We all know that if I said, what is theta? We know theta is pi, isn't it? Go ahead and, or 180. If you're in degree mode, go ahead and put cosine of 180 in your calculator. It did not give you negative four, it gave you negative one, okay? So, this is just a way to prove to you why the cosine, it doesn't matter what X coordinate this is, this is the unit circle, and this is 180, and the cosine of 180 is negative one. So now if I take the reciprocal, the secant of theta is negative one. All right, now tangent, toa, there's no opposite over adjacent. So we have to do y over x, sine over cosine. So zero over negative four, negative one is zero. Now cotangent is the reciprocal, and when we take the reciprocal, negative one over zero is undefined. So just like sine represents a vertical length inside the circle, cosine represents a horizontal length inside the circle, cotangent also represents a length um, that is actually on the outside of the circle, touching the circle, but at 180 degrees, there is so, no such segment. That's why it's undefined. Okay, let's go to D. Set up your six trig ratios. So theta intersected the unit circle at zero seven. So again, here's our same theme, graph, 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 so you can see it. All right, zero seven. So cosine is X, the horizontal distance, sine is Y, the vertical distance. Okay, so the sine of theta, I know we wanna say seven, but this is a vertical, I'm sorry, this is a unit circle. So I don't care if this said zero seven, zero five hundred. The sine of theta is one because in a unit circle, this is zero one. So then cosecant would be the reciprocal, which is also one. So now let's take out your calculator and let me prove to you why the answer is one and not seven. Put it in degree mode. And we know that if we went from here to here, that that's 90 degrees. So go ahead and put in the sine of 90 degrees into your calculator. Of course you get one. All right, cosine of theta is zero. And also, let's think about why. Where did you go horizontally to get here? Nowhere, there is no horizontal length, that's why it is zero. 
okay? Secant would be the reciprocal, so one over zero is undefined, and as I mentioned before, secant actually represents a segment that would be on the outside of the circle, and at 90 degrees, there's no such segment, it's undefined. All right, tangent would be sine over cosine, or one over zero, which is undefined. So at the same time, tangent, Tangent is actually defined as the vertical segment outside of the, seg outside of the circle that intersects the ser terminal side. There is no vertical segment um, when we have this point here. That's why it's undefined. Cotangent would be the reciprocal, and it is zero. So think about this. Let's go back up to C. When I said the sine of theta is zero, sine means vertical distance. You didn't go anywhere vertically to get to that point. All right, so again, um, if, you don't, if you're not sure about something, try putting these in your calculator. Put in the tangent of 90 degrees. You will get error or undefined. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, we have to start thinking more about other angles outside of quadrant one and angles uh, besides on the quadrantal angles. So before we do that, we also have to talk about signs what to know what to expect. So if I'm talking about the secant of an angle in quadrant three, I have to know is it positive or negative. So a little mnemonic device to help you remember that is all students take calculus. All right, so if you need to stop the video and label this, but the key here is this tells you what is positive. So what is positive um, obviously by process of elimination, you will figure out then the rest are negative. So in quadrant one, A stands for all. Every trig function is positive. And I think that makes sense because if everything is based on sine and cosine, sine, cosine is horizontal, sine is vertical, they are both positive. X and Y are both positive. Okay, quadrant two, S stands for sine, and then of course its partner, which would be cosecant. And let's think, why is that positive? Well, in quadrant two, is an X negative and Y positive? So anything where it's just Y and the hypotenuse, that's gonna be positive. All right, quadrant three, T stands for tangent. So tangent and its partner cotangent will be positive. Let's think why that's true. Tangent is sine over cosine or Y over X. So I have X is negative, Y is negative. If they're both negative, they make a positive. And then quadrant four is um, cosines where it's positive. And let's think why, because don't we associate cosine with X and sine would be negative. Okay, so now what I want to do in the next part is all we're doing is naming the quadrant and naming whether it will be positive or negative. All right, so this is why up to this point, I kept having you write down every time you had an angle, I kept having you write down where it is. All right, cosine of 152. That is quadrant two. Cosine is negative in quadrant two. Only sine and cosecant are positive. Tangent of five pi over four. Now this is gonna come back to, we have to know what five pi over four is. We shouldn't have to work that out. Five pi over four is actually 225 degrees. So that would be in quadrant three, tangents positive in quadrant three. All right, let's take a look at C, sine of 11 pi over six. Again, we should not have to work that out. We should know that 11 pi over six is 330 degrees. 330 degrees is in quadrant four. Sine is negative in quadrant four because the only things that are positive are cosine and its partner. All right, D, secant of five pi over three. Again, we should know five pi over three is 300 degrees. Now, anytime we deal with reciprocal functions, I always refer to their partner. Secant's partner is cosine. Cosine, this is quadrant four. Cosine is positive in quadrant four. Therefore, secant is as well. All right, cotangent of 75 degrees. Well, 75 is, of course, in quadrant one. Everything is in quadrant one. All right, F, cosecant of two pi over three. Well, first of all, we should know that two pi over three is 120 degrees. And again, anytime I deal with a reciprocal function, I would go to its partner, sine. Sine is positive in quadrant two, so therefore cosecant is as well. I would like you to add this, and I would like you to stop the video and to work on these two. 
the sine of negative 4 and 5 sixth pi and the tangent of 5,500 5, degrees. And I'm going to give you a hint. You probably, you may want to convert this to degrees. And, um, well, I'll, I'll leave it at that. So, when you are thinking about the signs of these, S-I-G-N-S, okay, you have to think about cosine being with X and sine being with Y. And we all know from junior high, middle school, what the signs are in the different quadrants. Okay, so last topic for this set of notes are reference angles. So we are building up to the next day, which is the big day where we put all of this together. All right, so right now we don't know how to answer the question, what is the sine of pi pi over four? All right, but tomorrow we're going to put all this together and um, answer that question. I know you'll be very excited about that. Okay, something else that we're gonna have to use are reference angles. Okay, reference angles are always the acute angle made with the x-axis. The acute angle made with the x-axis. All right, so you're like, all right, what's the big deal on that? Well, first of all, if you remember uh, when I did our unit circles on the first day, I talked about why I made these angles, knowing those how they reacted with the x-axis or made with the x-axis. Okay, secondly, you're going to see that when I make an acute angle with the x-axis, I can make a triangle. And we know that these triangles now will come from 30, 60, 90s, 45, 45, 90s, and 60, 30, 90s. Okay, so I asked you to find the reference angle. So first of all, again, I'm going to encourage you to graph. And then I want you to look for patterns that hopefully you won't have to always graph. All right, so find the reference angle for 5 pi over 6. So again, we've got to know that 5 pi over 6 is 150 degrees. So I'm going to graph 150 degrees. There's the terminal side. So what is the angle made with the terminal side and the x-axis? That would be 30 degrees. So the reference angle is 30 degrees or pi over 6, okay? Something that I want you to do is if your initial angle is in radians, keep your reference angle in radians, okay? So let's take a look at B. 5 pi over 3. We got to know that that's 300 degrees. So if I go to graph that, that is in quadrant 4. And what is the angle made with the x-axis? That is 60 degrees. So the reference angle for 5 pi over 3 is pi over 3 or 60 degrees. All right, let's take a look at C. 4 pi over 3. Again, we've got to know that's 240 degrees. So if I go to graph 240 degrees, what angle is made with the x-axis? That is 60 degrees or pi over 3. So the reference angle. Now take a look at all of these in radians. Look for a pattern. 5 pi over 6, its reference angle is pi over 6. 5 pi over 3, its reference angle was pi over 3. 4 pi over 3, its reference angle was pi over 3. Okay. All right. So hopefully, are you starting to see the pattern that if your angle is reduced, that your reference angle will have the same denominator as the original angle? All right, let's keep going. 135 degrees, graph 135. That makes a 45 degree angle. The reference angle is 45. So it is not a coincidence that you notice these reference angles are coming from my special right triangles, 30s, 60s, 45s. Now, not everything is from a special right triangle. Let's take a look at E. All right, 80 degrees. Some people want to say the reference angle is 10. No, 80 degrees is its own reference angle. The acute angle made with the x-axis. All right, and finally, negative pi over 4. If I go to graph that, we should know negative pi over 4 is negative 45 degrees. That is a 45 degree angle. The reference angle is 45. All right, so... Reference angles are always made with the x-axis. They are always acute, and they are always positive. So today we have talked about setting up our trig ratios. We've defined theta as to where it intersects the unit circle. Understanding that cosine represents my horizontal distance, or x. Sine represents my vertical distance, or y. We've talked about how to identify the sine, S-I-G-N, of a trig ratio using all students take calculus. That tells us what 
what ratios are positive, and then the, the process of elimination gives us what's negative. And finally, we've talked about reference angle, which is the acute angle made with the x-axis, acute angle. Now, tomorrow's a big day. We will be putting all of this together.